So the second step is to align the 3D sensor with the robot. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to click 3D sensor and the only thing that comes up is start sensor alignment wizard. So we'll go ahead and tap that and we're going to follow the on-screen instructions. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to attach a special alignment marker that we have using two screws to the end of the robot or to the flange of the robot. We're then going to move the robot to at least eight different positions and let the 3D scanner uh, see that uh, alignment marker uh, in space. And then that's going to orient the uh, robot to the uh, scanner space. The scanner does not need to be uh, precisely uh, mounted. It does need to be rigidly mounted above the bin such that it can see the entire bin from the bottom of the bin uh, to the top of the bin. Now the height of that's going to depend on which sensor you have, whether it's a medium or a large sensor, um, but you're going to position the sensor above the bin such that it can see uh, the entire bin, and then we're going to perform this alignment procedure. So we'll follow the on-screen instructions. It says step one, secure the alignment marker to the robot flange, then tap confirm. So we'll start by doing that now. So there's two, uh, two screws included with the alignment marker kit and there's also a dowel locating pin. So we'll want to mount that on the robot flange, make sure that it's flush. Okay, looks good. Now the other thing is often we want to remove the bin from the field of view. The reason is we want to just get a variety of points within the space that the uh, 3D sensor can see. So we want to have uh, spaces at the bottom of the bin and we want to have spaces at the top of the bin. So we'll go ahead and move that now. And we're going to use free drive mode to move this. So it says, step one, tap the move button, move the alignment marker to a place that is visible by the 3D scanner. So we'll go ahead and do that now. And since we're starting alignment from scratch, uh, this system was previously aligned, so we're going to hit reset samples. So now you see samples collected is set to zero. And we'll take that position and we'll click add sample. When we click add sample, you'll see the 3D scanner uh, scan the environment looking for that alignment marker. And you see that a samples collected has turned to one. So it found the alignment marker and it successfully added that sample. We're going to repeat this process uh, at least eight times. It's not important that we locate the alignment marker precisely, just that it is in a variety of positions from the floor of the bin uh, to the back of the bin, to the front of the bin, uh, within the uh, space that the 3D sensor can see. So in this case, you see that it was not able to find the alignment marker. That's not a problem. We'll just move it to a space that it can see it more easily. So you see that the samples collected has now moved to two. So we'll repeat this all the way until eight.
So now we're going to move to our eighth sample. Our goal is that we want an average error under one millimeter. Under half a millimeter would be great. So we'll tap the move button as before. And we'll click add sample. So in this case, you see when we uh, move from samples collected to eight, that now it shows alignment status is complete. Our average error in this case is under one millimeter. We're at 0.71 millimeters, which is acceptable. We could continue taking samples, up to 12 samples, to try and get that average error uh, under 0.5 would be really good. But we're within the tolerances required for the system. So when we've collected enough samples and our average error is sufficient, then we'll go ahead and click Next, and it tells us that we can now remove the alignment marker, so we'll go ahead and click Done.